bring in the management of ENIL, which is, of course, the largest uh, player in the space. Uh, Prashant Pandey is Managing Director and CEO at ENIL, and he's with us right now on the phone line. Prashant, thanks very much. Good morning. Good to have you here. Prashant, this side. Uh, so one more listed a competitor, I mean, they're already a competitor, but now in the listed space, what would you imagine this would do for the space, for the listed universe of uh, radio players, uh, Prashant? Go on. Well, I don't know if it does anything uh, specifically for the industry or the category or whatever, but I guess the more visibility there is for radio broadcasters, I think the better it is. In the past, also, we had another radio broadcaster who was list listed, and then they got delisted. But I think the addition of Radio City would be a welcome addition to the listed space. Prashant, uh, can you just give us a sense in terms of the competition that you that you know ENIL has with uh, the likes of Radio City? In which geographies do you share uh, the same space? Uh, so you know the biggest uh, radio market uh, is made up of the top 13 cities, as they are. They, these are the cities which the government of India calls as A plus and A category cities. And uh, Radio City is a competitor with Mirchi in, I think, uh, 12 out of these 13 cities. I think they're not present in Kolkata, but apart from Kolkata, they are present in all the other 12 cities. Uh, Radio City is a, is, a, is a key competitor of uh, Mirchi. Uh, it is in the uh, top uh, four or five brands in the company and in the country, and therefore it competes uh, uh, quite, uh, quite a bit with Mirchi in all the markets. And what would the market share stack up be? for the top three to four players? You, you know, because the revenue numbers are not kind of really public for all the players, it is a little difficult to guess, but I would imagine that, you know, Radio City would be possibly about 40 or 45 percent of Radio Mitchie in terms of its revenue size. Uh, and in terms of the pecking order, I suppose they are in revenue terms again at possibly a fourth position in the country. So I do not have any specific market share number, however, because, like I said, the numbers are not public. Hmm. Uh, there's a press conference there, uh, which uh, Radio City is hosting, and we'll, I guess, get more details uh, you know, on some of the numbers, financial information, etc. But, uh, Prashant, you've always maintained that setting up an op a radio operation is cumbersome, expensive, but you, once, you, uh, once you sort of start and uh, are, are in the business, uh, I mean, it's an attractive business to be in. Could you just tell us what is the uh, uh, current sort of operating environment like, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, trends on advertising, etc.? Uh, those things have been kind of tough now for the last many months. Well, you know, there are a few things to keep in mind when evaluating radio brands and radio companies. The first, of course, is, is the overall thing that radio always does better whenever the economy is in a bit of a, you know, uh, a bit of a uh, slowdown. And we've seen that in the last four or five years, the overall radio industry has been doing better than the other mainstream uh, competitors that it has. That's the first thing. The second thing is individual companies that do well tend to have very strong brands and strong footprints, right? And of course, strong leadership positions in the key markets. Uh, it is in many ways like any other media business where the top two or three guys typically tend to uh, do better than the rest of the industry. And uh, uh, so it, it's, it's very similar to that. And uh, that's what I would like to say over here. Just a quick last word then, Prashant. Um, how are you doing this quarter in terms of ad growth? What is it looking like, especially post-demonetization? Have things settled? You know, it's a few days back when I was in the studio, I mentioned to you that the Jan Feb March quarter will continue to be impacted by demonetization. And that's exactly what uh, I think I would like to repeat over here. Demonetization impact on media companies will remain in this quarter. Maybe it is lesser than it was in November and December, but it is still very much present over here. Extent to that extent of? Uh, sorry? To the extent of? Well, I would imagine that uh, it will pull down normal revenue growth by anywhere between 5 and 7 percent. So if a company would have reported 12 percent or 13 percent, it will possibly report 7 or 8 percent. Okay. Okay. All right, Prashant, we're going to let you go on that note. Thanks uh, very much for taking the time out and having a quick chat with us. So that's ENIL that 